This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Hey team, we have a new sponsor here at the Crypto Conversation, BitGet, one of the world's leading copy trading cryptocurrency exchanges. Yes, indeed. What happens if you've got the funds to invest, but you don't have the time to keep track of the market? You still want to make smart money moves. What do you do? Well, copy trading is a popular choice for beginner traders. You can shorten your learning curve by uncovering tips and strategies from more experienced traders. BitGet's copy trading platform has over 80,000 elite traders to choose from and 380,000 followers just like yourself who are already using the BitGet copy trading platform as a potential passive income stream. All it takes is one click. You can subscribe to an elite, profitable strategist, set your limits, automate your orders, and monitor their trades. I've got some links in the show notes below. One link will take you through to the BitGet sign-up page, give you a VIP discount. So learn all about it for yourself, thanks to BitGet. And now it is on with the show. My guest today is Abdul Osman. Abdul is the CEO at Goracle, which is a decentralized Oracle network built on the Algorand blockchain. Hey, welcome to the show, Abdul. Hey, thanks for having me, Andy. It is a pleasure. Pleasure to have you here. Let's do what we do at the beginning of the show, Abdul. I'll invite you to please introduce yourself. Love to just hear a little bit about your uh, professional story and yeah, what you've been doing in the lead up uh, to becoming CEO at Goracle. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me here. Uh, so Goracle is a decentralized blockchain oracle. Uh, and we've been building it for nearly a year and a half now. Uh, we started building with sports applications, getting off-chain data on-chain, building our own oracle. And, and we realized very quickly that the oracle we were building was pretty complex and be, could be generalized to many use cases, uh, with DeFi being the most in demand. Um, you know, so we our focus shifted to that being the main product because there was just such a need in the market for, for this product. And so, you know, for the past year and a half, we've been building it, finally getting ready to launch on mainnet at the end of this month. Uh, and so any application that's building a decentralized app that needs, you know, deep DeFi data, we're not just talking about the spot price, but volume and liquidity, any app that needs sensor data, sports data, you know, building insurance applications, anything that makes use of data in the real world, uh, can use our oracle yeah very good very good and why is it that you decided uh, initially to build on algorand uh abdul for the time the algorand blockchain really suited the needs for the sports application we were building right uh we needed the fast three to four second block times we needed the instant finality we needed the level of decentralization and it just ticked all the boxes the Oracle that we're building is also launching on the Algorand blockchain. Um, but, you know, we do recognize the need for interoperability uh, and, and this product is not in demand just on the Oracle, but I think, think or sorry, not just on Algorand, but uh, on every blockchain, we're seeing, you know, most chains <clears throat> needing this sort of solution. And so not only is it generalized to not provide any kind of data, but it's also generalized to fit onto any type of blockchain. And so, we're starting off with the interface to Algorand, and then we'll be expanding, expanding to Polygon, you know, Arbitrum, Cosmos, and, and various other chains. Yeah, because it's only once you add that cross-chain interoperability that, uh, yeah, Oracles and well, DApps in general really can uh, begin to showcase uh, their real potential, right? Exactly. And, and now you're not just getting data from off-chain, but you're also being able to connect two chains together with an Oracle. Uh, and so it, it just increases the value addition of that. So how long have you guys been uh, working on this? So what, is, what does that journey look like? So you said that you are approaching uh, the launch of Mainnet uh, very soon. Uh, I imagine it has been a, a little bit of a journey with a few pivots along the way to get here. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine we started off, in fact, as a hackathon project, right? Uh, yep, so we, right. we had built this for 
as, as something that was a, a part of a different product, which is a sports application. And at the same time, there's an Algorand hackathon going on. And we thought, hey, it might be interesting to add this little uh, piece of our product, which could be its own standalone to the hackathon. And it was extremely well received. And, and we realized just how much of a need there is for this product based on the messages that we were getting post hackathon, based on the interest we were getting. Uh, and so slowly, that was that was September 2021. And over the next four months, as we made those connections, as we built those relationships, we realized how important it was. And over the next six months after that, it slowly grew on to have its life of its own and, and ended up becoming the main product that we were working on uh, at the Gessick. And Gessick is a software development firm we, we, we had founded previously, uh, and we've been working on general products. You know, we split our time between consulting and developing apps for, for external uh, and building ventures and, and applications that can grow onto their own. And this was one of those that grew out of that Gessick firm. Got it. And as well as the upcoming launch on Mainnet, you also have an IDO, an initial DEX offering uh, that is fast approaching as well, Abdul. Yeah, yeah. That IDO is coming up on June 28th, and it gives, you know, interesting, interested parties their first opportunity to, to get their hands on some Gora. So the token is called Gora. Uh, it's used when you're running nodes to stake as a node runner. It's also used by customers when they're buying data and, and kind of paying for off-chain computations. Uh, it's also used as the governance token for our um for the, the proposals and the direction of the general protocol. Uh, and, and even if you're not running nodes, you can actually delegate that voting power that the Gora token gives you to actual validators and node runners. And this is the chance for, for kind of people to get in on the ground floor and, and be a part of the growth of this network. Very nice. So you said uh, the IDO is uh, takes place June 28th. Uh, as we record today, it is what, Thursday, 8th of June. So that's about, well, 20 days away, really, as we record. By the time I publish it, I'll probably publish it pretty quickly, actually. So anyway, yeah, that is coming up. Uh, the IDO and just yeah so for people that uh, do indeed want to get in on the ground floor with that Agora token um, what should they do where should they go uh, Abdul yeah so if you go to our website goracle.io that'll pretty much direct you wherever you need to go um, so the, the sale is happening on token soft primarily which is a decentralized uh, platform that's highly compliant, you know, with with everything going on with the SEC and just uh, increased focus on on not just regulation but increased focus on um, what's the word prosecution of securities. It's really important we do this in a compliant manner, and so that's why we chose TokenSoft as, as the leading client launchpad. Uh, you can find the links and everything on our website, which is goracle.io, and that's just spelled g oracle oracle and i see you also have a uh, strategic collaboration going uh with the uh, tokenomics dow um it looks like they are undertaking an audit of uh well your or goracle's uh tokenomics just to make sure that i suppose um you know there's uh, a transparent uh, accountable uh process um yeah how uh, what's the details on that abdul yeah the tokenomics has been one of the things we've spent the most time on you know we started off with designing it with bright node we worked with dr stilianos in the tesseract academy uh to to improve the design we have our own internal mathematicians and statisticians and economists who've been working on it um and this is just like you know, the fourth set of eyes to finally give it another final stamp of approval before it goes live. Uh, as you can imagine with an Oracle, securing all of the protocols that are building on you is, is paramount. And because the token is, is essential and it's kind of the, uh, the heart of the proof of stake consensus mechanism that we use, 
uh, it's even more important that we as a project get it right. And that's why we have so much uh, focus on this. And Tokenomics DAO is they've done so much wonderful work with other projects. We loved using a lot of their resources when we were building our own. And this is just another way to uh, kind of get a, a fourth opinion, essentially. Yeah, and it's much more, uh, it's just reassuring if you can look at a project and see that they have uh, been working with something like uh, the tokenomics DAO to make sure, as I say, everything is um, transparent, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we do publish our own economic design documents, uh, but I think the way tokenomics DAO publish it in an interesting, digestible manner uh, and a third trusted, a third trusted party uh, will just make it more fun and more easy for people to read as they do their research very nice abdul let's just bring it back to the kind of the i suppose the uh, the vision of uh Gorical. um how do you see this uh, how do you see Gorical evolving uh as we go forward and, and i suppose you know love to hear more about how you see the role of uh blockchain oracles uh, evolving uh in the future what what kind of uh, different use cases um do you see yeah so you know most 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 applications decentralized applications on the blockchain today that are using an oracle are majority using their own homemade you know built oracle and so you know and then the reason is not because they enjoy you know, we we building their own, but uh, lack of a better option is is really the problem. Uh, and you know, you look at all the different oracles out there; they're all designed differently. They all focus on one thing, uh, and there's no really general purpose kind of oracle that really does everything. Um, and so, our our goal really is to not so people don't have to build their own solutions; they can just have a ready to go. And that should free up 20, 30% of people's development times and, and their budgets, creating a data marketplace for people to come and be able to choose from many different options. Uh, another, another important thing is the being data providers having the ability to not have to also build you know, these centralized oracles for people to use, connecting to all these different blockchains. You know, data providers provide data. Uh, customers want to call that data, and we just want to build the infrastructure that allows data providers to connect with customers uh, in, a, in, a, in as decentralized manner as possible. And so in the future, we see that the more, the higher the quality of data that's available on chain, the higher quality of applications using data. And that's where talking about decentralized insurance, I think is a big one that can uh, benefit from it. I think we'll start to see a lot more uh, things you can do with decentralized finance. Now that you can get rich data, um, you can even do some risk analysis uh, and have lending protocols that are a lot more flexible, order book DEXs and derivatives and options that are have, have futures similar to Web2. You're going to start to see fantasy sports and sports betting products uh, and I think the sophistication of the products will increase greatly. Yeah, I have no doubt uh, they will, Abdul. And it's you know it's it's interesting. This there's definitely a need for decentralized data sources. Um, you know, there's kind of a there's a, a a narrative emerging at the moment. You know, um, I'm not sure if you uh, spend too much time on uh, crypto Twitter, but um, you know, Balaji talks about this a lot. How when something like inflation is happening, and you know the the state, uh, the centralized authority that is running the state um, becomes perhaps incentivized to hide the inflation problem. And then if uh, the good example at the moment is, I think um, in the US, they released a, a, a jobs report last week and the jobs report was, you know, it was more, perhaps more positive than, than people were expecting. Uh, but if you dig into the numbers, they don't necessarily stack up. I think they were, they were, someone cross-referenced them against uh, LinkedIn job data. And uh, yeah, perhaps uh, it's, it's just a funny world that we, we live in at the moment. You can't 
trust uh, the data coming out of the state that perhaps um, in years gone by, people would have just taken it uh, on trust. But now, um, yeah, I'm not sure that we can. And one potential solution in the future is uh, getting a range of independent sources and then, uh, yeah, through Oracle solutions such as Goracle, um, yeah, perhaps we can have more trusted verifiable on-chain data, Abdul. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point you made about um, not just the lack of trust, but the lack of, the lack of transparency. And, and it's not even, it's not even, you know, sometimes when these governments publish these types of data, another problem is the data is just so stale by the time it's published. Um, and, and, you know, with not not only is it not transparent and pretty opaque how sometimes it's collected or or the methodologies that's used, um, but the fact that you know it's not useful by the time it comes out is another challenge. And and as things go on change, we start on chain. Sorry, we start to see this concept of total value locked, right? And I think that's something that's highly underrated. Total value locked because what that means is you're actually able to see the amount of value that's created by applications and protocols and how much is, is, is being locked into it. And not only is it a real-time indicator, but it's an actual accurate, um, verifiable indicator. And these types of indicators that are on-chain allow for greater, better, much better decision-making uh, around when you're building products and, and um, deciding which direction to go in when you're leading a business or leading a um, government or making decisions that are going to affect the lives of people. And so that's another promise of the blockchain and, and Oracle can contribute greatly by allowing these types of applications to be more sophisticated, which in turn allows these metrics to become more sophisticated by putting more things on chain. And, you know, we're starting to see uh, forward moving governments start to embrace the, the decentralization and even uh, companies that seem to be anti crypto or, or countries that seem to be anti crypto exploring CBDCs. You know, the downside is it gives them a lot more control in terms of freezing and, and, and um, you know, clawing back tokens and things like that. But the, the positive side is making people much more used to digital currencies. Yeah, that is. Uh... Yeah, very much the case, Abdul. I suppose then as we finish up this part of the podcast, I was just looking at a, a blog post on your website. Look, I mean, it is from, I guess it's from a few months ago, maybe even longer, but uh, it says five ways Goracle will change the Algorand network and the crypto world. Uh, so there's just a few different use cases here. So maybe we can just run through them uh, real quick. So number one, well, it says enabling a new generation of use cases. Uh, so Goracle's data feeds will enable developers to build novel decentralized applications um, from stock market, crypto, uh, weather, sports events, shipping sales, savings, insurance, and prediction markets. Um, number two, NFT gaming. This is quite interesting. And I know this ties into, I think, um, number four, which is verifiable random uh, functions. So do you want to just explain uh, how Goracles can help um, empower, yeah, I guess NFT gaming and what a verifiable random function is and, and how that helps as well uh, in kind of metaverse uh, or play to earn style activities, Abdul? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, with, with Oracles, first of all, you have verifiable random functions. And so it reduces the ability to um, kind of fake results, right? You know, it makes it makes the generation of, of key things like the distribution or, or things like that much more fair. Um, the ability to have NFT data, you can now source information from the real world uh, and use that to create on-chain assets. And, and also it opens up the ability to have kind of a metaverse specific chain that also uses data from other chains. So, okay, you want to transact using some Bitcoin or you want to um, you know, pass something over to someone else. 
you can kind of create this ecosystem where you're able to pull in real world information. Um, you know, if you have some sort of loyalty program off chain, you can now get that on chain. Uh, you can sell or transact and it doesn't have to be inside of the application. So there's a lot of things like that where you don't, we don't want to create more silos as we move forward. You have uh, metaverse economies right now that are on their own chain that are optimized for metaverse related um, functionality. And, you know, in a way, the more you have these app specific blockchains, the more that you kind of wall them off. And we want to make sure that there are bridges and oracles that are there for, for the design to take into account interoperability from the start. Yeah, got it. Very well said, Abdul. All right. Well, I reckon uh, we will go to a break and then uh, we'll come back. We'll have some fun. We'll run you through the very famous crypto conversation hot take round. Uh, but before we do that, Abdul, again, just you know, for for people listening uh, that want to learn more about Goracle or yeah, get involved with the IDO that is coming up uh, June twenty eight, I believe. Again, just. Uh, give people the the high level details of of what's going on and, and where they should go yeah so just you know the best place if you follow us on twitter at goracle network we're constantly post posting announcements on there uh, and, and frankly i think if you go to the website you can probably reach any other part of the goracle ecosystem including where to participate in the ido and and, and just where to learn more our Telegram, our Discords are very active. People are always on there ready to help. Uh, and so the website, goracle.io, is probably the best starting point to head in any direction that you're interested in. Awesome. There you go, team. And of course, a link will be in the show notes as well. Uh, let's go to that break and then we'll come back and we'll run Abdul through the very famous crypto conversation hot take ground back in one moment. Look, we'd all like to say we're pro traders. But the reality is, we're probably not. But with BitGet, you don't have to be. Why? Because BitGet is the world's largest copy trading exchange. Instead of you muddling through it on your own, feel confident. BitGet allows you to automatically copy trade from over 80,000 elite traders. With 24-7 support on our secure copy trading platform. Start following expert traders on BitGet.com. Check for details in the show notes and join BitKit today. All right, we are back and I'm with Abdul Osman. Abdul, as we've learned, is the CEO of Goracle, a decentralized Oracle network initially built on uh, Algorand, but will be uh, cross-chain compatible as well. Mainnet launch coming up very soon also that initial dex offering coming up uh, later this month as well on the 28th of june for more details yeah uh goracle.io but link is in the show notes abdul i like to finish each uh, crypto conversation podcast with a quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes are you up for it let's go andy Let's go, Abdul. Just going to run some questions at you. Just want kind of quick, snappy answers, hot take style. No right or wrong way to do it. Uh, question one for you, Abdul. Uh, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist to multi-chain opportunist spectrum? That's a great question. So rapid answer. I'm somewhere in the middle. I uh, love Bitcoin. I'm a maxi in some situations. But are other situations when it comes to building decentralized applications, I am a max when it comes to interoperability. So yeah, depends on the use case. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a actually a really good answer, Abdul, because it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, yeah, I mean, because Bitcoin, nothing really touches Bitcoin in terms of the, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, the sound money, digital gold, uncensorable transaction type thesis. Uh, but yeah, if you want to build um, dApps and oracles and things like that, then um, Bitcoin is not the best bet. But yeah, this is both both things can be true at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we live in a world where multiple things can be true at the same time. So exactly. Yeah. All right, uh, next question, Abdul, what would you say is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? 
absolutely yeah a hot seat for sure here <laughs> um yeah my my firmest conviction i would have to say has to do with you know if we, the, the faster we can move uh, a lot of key parts of the current you know how we do things on chain i think the better off we'll be uh, I think the biggest world, the, one of the biggest problems facing this uh, planet is corruption. And, you know, these hidden systems all have allowed corruption to flourish. And the more, the faster we can move um, policy, how policy is made, how votes are done, how money is transferred on chain and public, the faster we can root out corruption overall. Yeah, really nice, really nice. Does AI have a, a role to play in that kind of, I suppose, yeah, taking the, 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 the corruption just comes from humans, right, <laughs> Abdul? So uh, anytime you have humans uh, in the equation, you're going to have that human infallibility. So yeah, blockchains are one part of that picture of uh, solving uh, the need to take humans out of the equation. And another part of the picture that people obviously are, you know, increasingly interested in at the, at the moment is AI. I mean, it's just pure speculation, but can you see a world where AI and, and blockchains can help some solve some of those human governance and corruption problems? Yeah, I think, you know, we live in a world of patterns, right? And in a world where in, in advanced economies with low corruption, such as Finland, um, how money is spent, you can, you can, you know how money is spent. And the patterns there are very different from some of the most corrupt countries where you can also have patterns of how money is embezzled. And I think with AI, it can really analyze large amounts of data to understand which transactions are likely uh, corruptible and which ones are not. Obviously, it's harder to do when it is um, when everything is hidden behind closed doors. Uh, but as, as things become more public, it will generate such large amounts of data for really anybody to handle uh, and analyze in a meaningful way. And that's where I think AI will come in is as as the world moves with more and more data, I think we will need AI and machine learning to help make sense of, of all that data. Very well said, Abdul. All right, well, Bill Gates famously said, we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So look, with that in mind, Abdul, in 10 years is a long time, but whatever you want here, Web3, uh, the Oracle data economy, what does it start to look like in 10 years time? Yeah, so in 10 years, a lot of people will be using Oracles and blockchains as a core part of their world. They won't be able to live without it but they won't really know they're using it or they won't care that they're using it. It'll just be embedded into our everyday lives. Exactly right. All right. Flip side of that, of course, Abdul is a quote by William Gibson, who said that the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Can you think of an example of the future being here right now, but most people just aren't really aware of it? Yeah, I mean, majority of the world, you know, is still using uh, not smartphones, dumb phones, and and, and you know you know uh, older phones, and so we there's definitely a huge disparity in in how uh, some people live, the minority live in this world versus the majority. Uh, and although blockchain sounds like an amazing thing for a lot of us, you know we do have to understand it's based on distributed computing, and sometimes that distributed computing is not truly distributed. And so I think we definitely want to reach the global audience and, and, and be able to make things more equitable and, and fair uh, with what we have, because we have more than enough technology and, and, and to go around. Very nice. All right, time to zoom out. Time to get weird for a second, Abdul. Uh, what do you see as the long-term future for the human race? Do you see dystopia or utopia? Yeah, you know, I guess it, it always depends how far that time scale is. I mean, a long enough time span is definitely the sun gobbling us all up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. in general, I think th th things will get better. Um, they tend to get better, you know, especially with, with you know, a lot of the ways our, our time has been freed up. So I, I think we'll head into a world of utopia, but it, it may take a little bit of pain to get there. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, finally, Abdul, uh, what is your favourite science fiction uh, book, film, or TV show? Um, I'm a big fan of Isaac Asimov. Nice. Uh, and yeah, a lot of his his books, like you know, uh, are, are are favorites of mine. You know, Foundation's a really good one. Yeah, Foundation is um, yeah one of the 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 really great um, sci-fi. Uh, novel series and kind of utopian science fiction in itself right yeah yeah exactly and and it's it's interesting to see how long ago it was written some of these are are timeless for sure yes indeed all right uh thank you so much for coming on the show abdul been uh, a pleasure to have you here and learn uh what you guys are building uh with goracle Again, just finally, um, tell people where they can find you on Twitter or wherever else you like to hang out. And again, um, how they can get hold of some Gara tokens in the Goracle IDO uh, June 28. Yeah, absolutely. I would say visit our website, goracle.io. That will give you the links to our Twitter, Telegram, the IDO launchpad, and everything you need. Uh, again, that's Goracle. Dot io. Awesome. And link is in the show notes. Thank you, Abdul. All the best and bye for now. Have a good one, Andy. Thanks for having me on. Goodbye. All right. Well, there you go. That was Abdul from Goracle. Uh, super fun chatting Oracle stuff uh, with Abdul. And yeah. Uh, great choice there with uh, Isaac Asimov and uh, the Foundation series. Of course, Foundation series um, first published as a series of short stories and novellas in 1942 to 1950. Uh, and then three collections uh, as a trilogy, I think, in, in the 1950s. Um, but the premise of the series, premise of the Foundation series, of course, is that in uh, the waning days of a future galactic empire, uh, the mathematician Harry Seldon spends his life developing a theory of psychohistory, uh, which is a new form of mathematics. And using statistical laws of mass action, it predicts the future of large population, uh, including the imminent fall of the empire, which, is, which encompasses uh, the entire Milky Way and a dark age lasting 30,000 years before the second empire arises. So yeah, quite interesting. Um, it's also, of course, uh, Apple, I think Apple TV did a, um, did a TV series uh, of, yeah, the first foundation book, I think is the story. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we reached the end of another episode. Thank you for listening, team. Uh, again, you know, if you wanted to know more about Goracle, it is goracle.io, link in the show notes uh, for the IDO offering. Yeah, but that is today's show, people. Please make sure you are subscribed to the Crypto Conversation in whatever podcast app you are using. Uh, but that is it for today. Thanks, team. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave New Coin.